chemistry is literally everything. There would be nothing without chemistry. When I give my talks and stuff about mineral elements, I literally just put the periodic table, like the fundamental building blocks of life. Science. Science. Technology. Technology. Medicine. Medicine. Health. Health. These four things make the world go round. Without them, we couldn't exist. This is the Monday Science Podcast, a weekly show bringing you the latest research and news in science, technology, medicine, and health, answering your questions or finding experts in the field to answer them. Your host is a pharmacist, an award-winning scientist. She leads her own research group and is the founder of King's College London Fight the Fakes, a tad bit on the qualified side. Welcome to Monday Science. Here's your host, Dr. Bahija Rimey Abraham. I find your career path interesting. I hope you don't take offense with what I'm about to say. When I've interacted with people who have ended up going down more facilities role, they sometimes become a bit jaded about academia and it's like oh I just do this just to pay the bills and do again another thing that I was like oh okay you're very happy <laughs> you're very passionate which respectfully is is not it's not that it's not common when people look at careers within academia that is not a lectureship a fellow there there is sometimes this a perception that a facilities related role is the end of your academic career. Is that something you reflected on before you, and also how have you been able to turn that? Yeah, sure. So I think after my PhD, you know, you face that crisis, like what am I doing with my life? You know, and I've actually been talking to one of my staff about this recently. And, you know, I, I realized, okay, postdoc, and you begin to feel like there's this mapped out route that if you want to stay in academia and, you know, you need to do your postdocing and then you find a lectureship position and start to build your research group, you need to find your and like you know, that, right publications 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 beef up your cv and i just looked at all of that and i was like oh god you know like it does not really feel like something that i want to do and i you know looking at all these pis and how stressed they are all the time trying to get funding and, and i was just like i don't want it i want to do science like i love what i'm doing i think metals and everything is really fascinating there's potential but i don't want to do that so i i accepted this position originally this was a research fellow position that they offered me so it was essentially a high-level postdoc in the beginning. And then, you know, I had a conversation with Phil Blower, and there really was that point of what do you want to do? Like, because he was saying, supporting me to do a lectureship position and kind of be the new face of metalomics and academia at King's. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I really like being in a position where I can interact with so many diverse projects every single day and like see connections and help people make their own research even better better you know how can I help them make the connections that necessarily see yet for themselves and I just found that to be so much more exciting and rewarding and being able to work with instrument companies and develop new technology you know because that's what really drives science forward is when there's new technology that opens doors that you can do things that you haven't done before it's the how right and so it was just that part was exciting for me and then not having to think about writing grants and you know I had to think about other things obviously it's more of like a entrepreneur business small business about income and all that stuff and that's been a learning curve for me but I actually really enjoyed the opportunity to be able to have becoming a facilities manager but I think I didn't let the word manager suck me down into this hole that you're talking about because you know I was called the manager but then I you know threw in like lead scientist and manager because that's what I always really felt like I was and always driving and developing and evolving the facility and you know getting put on grants you know pushing the field forward that's really what I saw my my role of in the beginning so I think it's the perception you know and I think I actually personally feel like all core facilities should have this dynamic where you have an element of core service that's routine that you know what you're doing but you're also very much pushing the technology within your respective field to be able to offer the like the most cutting edge services to all types of users and that's just kind of my perspective on the position yeah I I like to give not saying you gave yourself a title but there's a point where no because <laughs> I do that as well sometimes you have to because if you were to 
be the title of the role that you have as you rightfully said it will suck you in and then you become defined by that and that's what I see a lot of the time and so again need for that visibility for examples of people who've gone into roles such as yourself and you know going into sort of the facility management role but lead scientist it doesn't have to be the end of a career that's how a lot of people do perceive it but yeah I I don't oh I remember it was during my PhD no I was writing up and I had I that's when I actually started my consultancy I got into the world of consultancy during my PhD and I was doing some consultancy work for someone and uh, I was I signed the email you know be Jeremy Abraham PhD student he was like no 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 you can't call yourself a PhD student I said oh but I I am he said no 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 because you're dealing with companies so you have to say PhD researcher so I said oh okay then he said but also you can't just sign it off as PhD researcher because they'll think that you're just my PhD researcher and I'm I'm not so I want you to put that you're doing PhD because it looks good but then what is your job title I said what then I asked him I was like what what is my job title he's like no no what is your and then we had this back and forth of no what is your job okay and and that's when I learned that actually reflect on yes you might have your job but what is what are you doing and how does that how is that portrayed to to others. I just want to ask a couple more questions about the LMF and then I want to talk about your new role that's coming up. What was the biggest challenge setting up the LMF? So many. I mean, I transitioned the LMF from, you know, kind of an operation literally into an autonomous core facility. So obviously that that involves a lot of interaction with upper level management and being able to convince kings that this is definitely worthwhile as an autonomous entity unto itself but i think the most the the hardest thing was in the beginning not having the adequate support with respect to staffing and infrastructure i was literally doing everything i was a technician i was procurement i was ordering lasers not knowing anything about laser i was learning how to do the laser ablation the elemental imaging you know i was promoting the field of metal i was doing literally everything probably for the first couple of years and it's only been the last i would say two and a half years or so where you know there's been more incremental support you know obviously kings began to recognize that their potential in this i mean to their credit obviously they got staffing and you know now i have two fixed positions of staff we we were in what i called my harry potter closet are you still in that harry potter closet we budget for refurb you'll show you tomorrow so oh. to half of the mass spec facility is huge it you... was 12 square meters yeah. and all these instruments it was a tetris game so it was quite warm you know, as well it's Maybe. safety they know they came in they just were like we didn't see any of this it was but it was those kinds of obstacles to overcome because i had such a strong vision such a strong drive and seeing what the potential was in this and so I would I would be at work till 12 1 a.m finishing work you know lasering overnight and I mean I look back and it was it was crazy but that's what was driving me so be so that was the that was probably the most difficult thing was just like like seeing what I knew was possible and seeing where I was at that time point was incredibly challenging at some times and I think that goes that's kind of a message for everyone hold on very very clearly to that vision and never never second guess despite what the current circumstances are because if you have that and that's powerful and you feel it it will happen you know just take it like almost moment by moment sometimes I remember there's one time I never cried there's one time though it was like nine o'clock at night everything was going to crap and I like closed the door I locked the office I like sobbed for 30 seconds and I was like pull yourself together and then I kept going and I think other than that it was just like it's that endurance but now it's literally everything is coming to fruition you know the momentum is there the support at King's is really coming on board you know and it's and it's fun exciting and it's it's what I I've always seen as possible and just becoming more and more and more so that was that was probably the most challenging thing was to deal with that temporary period of just like oh my god look at this this is the LMF like this is not oh you know this is not what I see but now it's kind of starting to come to fruition you've dropped so many gems in that I remember getting emails from you at like midnight I was like why why is she sending me this time of day I don't know what's going on journey to greatness is hard and um, especially when you're going against the grain it's easy when you're following a path that is already laid out but when you're carving out a new path and you have a vision of where you know it's possible the limitation is probably the limitation is not even in the imagination the limitation is in getting there and getting everybody else on board and being patient you know it's 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 inspiring because you sometimes in the midst of a difficult of difficulty you can forget 
that it can actually be temporary. It's not trying to say, you know, you should stay in something negative, but there are points where something is happening yeah. that is a necessity for a bigger thing. Yeah, um, exactly. And this, I mean, this point has been brought to me by, you know, a couple of people that I know closely. They're saying, just leave. Like, why are you in London? Like, you're so unhappy. Like, why don't you just like go off into the mountains? And, you know, and I'm like, but no, you don't understand like what's developing. It's meant to happen. It's happening now. This is worth it. You know, like, yes, I I look miserable right now, okay? Like, I'm not a happy camper, I will admit it. But no, I'm not going to just leave it and drop everything because it's the long term. It's the long term that matters. And I think, first of all, if something doesn't, I think we've talked about this before, if something doesn't completely freak you out a little bit, not big enough. That's always been a sign that I'm doing the right thing. If I'm a bit like, oh my God, what am I getting myself into? And then second of all, if it's difficult, then it's worth doing. And like you're saying, it's not it's not something that like you should be miserable and happy. And that's that, that difficulty and struggle is something different. But coming up against resistance, that means that like you're actually doing something meaningful and important because you're going against the grain and you're contributing something and it's not supposed to be easy and in that process you actually find a strength in yourself that you never knew existed and it solidifies you as a human being and then you begin to realize that you can do anything you have everything that needs to take nothing will ever come from the surface and that's what I've come to recognize over the last several years is that we all have everything that we need even though we don't believe it there's nothing external to us there's nothing on the surface that is going to give us something that we don't already have it's about recognizing what we do have you know which is in the process not easy and then acting from from that and no matter what you do in your life you will be successful what's the future of the lmf what's the next step what's the next big big thing we've got to so, look forward to? there's been a lot of reshuffling right now so i was recently basically and I'm moving into a new role at King's College um, into business development manager of the research management innovation director at RMID, um, basically taking the skills, natural skills that I've used at the LMF to develop it, um, still working very much with the LMF, but stepping a little bit more away from the day-to-day operational level and looking more about, you know, how can we start to facilitate more external income and interactions and networking with the LMF, which I've, what I've, what I've been doing already, but more importantly, how can I extend that to the other core facilities at King's College and really make what what's needed is like a, a more solidified integrated network of core facilities that King's users can use that presents a more like how do I want to say this integrated face and easy act accessibility Perfect. and cohesiveness between the, the core facilities so that's going to be my new role going forward which I'm really excited about I think it's very well much needed at King's I think I can take what I've done at the LMF with that so that will be kind of my new role going forward which now you know gives an incredible opportunity to hire in some more staff at the LMF and we're going to be doing a restructuring um, looking to you know in terms of next steps in terms of the analytics what we're wanting to do I'm getting in a new technology where we can look at the entire periodic table boom all at once so true metallomics mapping there's a brand new laser that we're going to be getting so there's a lot of exciting stuff in the pipeline for all this cool imaging stuff oh I'm very um, excited to hear I've, yeah. I've got an upcoming meeting with your team actually for some work with my phd research i'm very excited because you know we had our our work that we did a couple of years ago that's been good to help understand what's possible now so yep. i'm hoping that we'll be in a good position it sounds exciting especially being able to map the whole periodic t- yeah this is very exciting so we're going to be able to send some samples to get some tests probably by november or so okay. but there's there's massive potential so i'm excited about that and we actually with maddie parsons we got this massive 7.1 million dollar grant through the welcome leap initiative the tissue delta project so we're going to be looking at understanding the progression of triple negative breast cancer and this is the first time elemental by imaging and metalomics has now literally been slotted in to a whole kind of multimodal imaging suite within the context of cancer so i like from a scientific perspective the next few years are going to be super exciting because i'm really anticipating us discovering a lot of kind of novel aspects to this amazing and so with your new role will you still get to do much science is that something you're going to miss if you're not i think obviously i won't be as involved on the day-to-day level in terms of lasering and projects and interacting with users at the lmf and you know not 
listed as like on grants. Um, so I think there probably will be an aspect where I feel, you know, a greater distance from that. My staff probably already know that I'm going to like be calling them any cool projects are coming in. But I think as a business development manager role, you're still needing to understand the science that's going on. If you're wanting to even develop it and to get, you know, external people using facilities or, you know, looking at new applications or not potential. So in that sense, I'll still be very much connected with I think the the bigger picture of the scientific questions being asked. And I think that's always what's been most interesting for me anyway. And how can I enable new connections to make that science progress even faster and more effectively? You started off your career on this, on well, your academic journey, music, creativity, chemistry. Do you still identify as a chemist now for the Royal (laughs) Society of Chemistry? Chemistry is literally everything. There would be nothing without chemistry in it. You know, when I give my talks and stuff about mineral elements, I literally just put the periodic table, like the fundamental building blocks of life. You know, it's something that we're so familiar with. Oh yeah, like school. It blows me away when you think about the the complex interactions of these elements lead to this and lead to what we're doing now and lead to life and like cheese, like, you know, and so you so basically with metal ones breaking it down to like understanding the role of those fundamental building blocks and what we can do to analyze and understand them. So yeah, chemistry is literally everything. And so do I consider myself a chemist person? And I think it comes back to this discussion that we had about being creative and being able to see the connections and interrelationships of many different things. And I think I see myself as a a human being who has done science, who is really curious and engaged and wanting to understand how the world and nature works. And I've been fortunate to study chemistry, which is what I feel like is really the foundation foundation of understanding a lot of interactions of everything and being able to use my experiences through chemistry and all of the tools that I've learned to be able to then begin to look at these connections in very different kinds of ways. So I guess in a certain way, like in the most essential aspect, I'm a chemist because I'm looking at everything. You know? But I really want to emphasize like we need to start moving away from like I'm a biologist, I'm a chemist, I'm a physicist, because that is what is killing science it's killing us right now it's just killing us as humanity we just we separate we divide we see things in pieces we don't see things connected and the reality is that everything is connected whether we see it or not doesn't mean that it's not and i think that's kind of the most important thing is that there's so much there to be seen we just need to open up our eyes and (laughs) well it's been a pleasure it's been an absolute pleasure having you on monday science before you go share with us any key take-home messages messages I think I've dropped a lot of those things actually just in the context of what we're talking about. But again, the thing that's been the most meaningful and rewarding for me in this whole journey is seeing connections and connecting dots where nobody else has seen them before. And that's where I feel like I have the most impact in what I'm doing. To be like, oh, you see this, this, and this? Like, oh, go. Like, so you see that, that, and that? Go, you know, and, and being a master integrator within the context of a master integrating field. And so I think that's just my message for everybody out there is like, that is the most important thing is like, look at connections, look at things in an integrated way, you know, move away from just that exclusive way of concentrating on one thing and kind of, I call it like a, a multiple and inclusive approach to looking at science. You can be good at many things at the same time science and music chemistry and biology and physics you know we're whole human beings and we should take the same approach to what we do in life you've been listening to the monday science podcast a weekly show bringing you the latest research and news in science technology medicine and health we hope you've gotten some useful and thought-provoking info from the show and we hope you had fun along the way We know we did. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on our website at www.mondaysciencepodcast.com. Shoot us an email at info at mondaysciencepodcast.com. Find us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Monday Science. And access episode summaries at mondayscience.medium.com. See you next week on the Monday Science Podcast.